Okay, welcome back to uh, part two, the final part of my um, Raspberry Pi slash Retro combination uh, project. You may remember this Raspberry Pi board from last video. It's essentially the, the stock Raspberry Pi. This is what it used to look like. And so I removed all the big connectors in order for it to fit into the Retro case. And so this also means that we had to get rid of the, the USB connector bit because that one was particularly big. But that is not necessarily a disadvantage because now we can take one of the ports that were on the board and um, and hook it up to the retro. So here is what where the, the USB connector used to sit and it's got US, uh, two USB um, ports and to each of them I connect four wires. Red is for um, for plus five volts, black is for ground, and the green and white wires are for the USB data lines. And so I have, first of all, I take one of these wires, uh, one of these uh, ports and wire it to yet another USB connector that is um, facing out to the back of the case. This is because uh, the Raspberry Pi is a, will run Linux, and so we definitely want to have console access, so we want to be able to, to connect a, a USB keyboard in order to uh, to, to do some typing on the console. And the other port, of course, goes to the retro. Um, our uh, USB adapter for retro games. So we connect the, the power lines to the, the respective pins and the USB lines to the, the terminating uh, resistors on the Retro's main board. This is just like a, a place where I thought it might be rather convenient to have the um, to, to connect the wires. And so that establishes the USB connection between the Retro and the Raspberry Pi. Now, uh, I was a little concerned, a little worried that there would not be enough space for the Raspberry Pi underneath the main board because one thing we do not want is the, the, the Retro's main board pushing down on the processor. This is the, the, the CPU of the Raspberry Pi, because this is a very sensitive part with lots of tiny, tiny connections, and so we wouldn't want to, uh, to break that. But as it turns out, that there is just enough space that the, the boards don't even touch, so there's no risk in pushing down a cartridge onto the retro, and because it, it would just not collide with the Raspberry Pi, so that's good. Uh, there's one more thing I had to add since we can no longer access, let's see, this is the, the, the micro USB connector on the Raspberry Pi board that is in charge of power supply. But since this port is no longer accessible, what I did was I added a pair of wires and hooked them up to this capacitor, which buffers the input voltage. So um, by applying five volts here, we can now power up the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so now we have the retro case closed again with the Raspberry Pi crammed inside. And I added a uh, Sonic 3 cartridge and a Super Nintendo controller just because we can and because I like this one better than the Sega controllers. And so at, on the back I've connected a monitor via HDMI and this computer keyboard uh, to the extra USB port just so we can type on the console. And so let's see what happens as I power the thing up. Okay, so we see the uh, Raspberry Pi boot screen, we see uh, the boot up sequence, and in particular we see that the Pi detects a product named Retro, consisting of a joystick and um, a removable drive. Okay, let's first log on to the um, computer. Okay, so now I've got a console, and we can see... Uh, you can see under slash dev, we see a uh, device SDA showing up, which is the mass storage device. And so um, we need to, uh, to mount this device into the file system so we can access the files. And so since I don't want to do that now, I wrote a little script, which is uh, called retrohotplug.sh. It looks for such devices on the USB port, uh, mounts them into the file system, and then it looks at, at the files that are on the drive and launches the appropriate uh, emulators. So in this case, it will find 
the Sonic 3 ROM file on the Retroads, um, in the Retroads root directory, and so it will launch a, an emulator for Mega Drive. What it also does, since Sonic 3 has, has save games on board, um, it will, will take the save game file and copy it over into the directory where the emulator expects the save games to be. So, and we'll see how that works. So the script will say retro found at dev SDA, and then it just mounts it, launches the emulator, loads the ROM. You can see the light goes on here, so it loads the data from the cartridge. And yeah, this takes a little longer uh, than it does when, when you connect the retro to a computer, and I have yet to figure out why this is the case, um, because the uh, the Raspberry Pi's USB port should should be capable of full speed. Okay, so here it boots into the game, and here comes Sonic 3. And as you can see, I can use the Super Nintendo controller because it it just enumerates as a USB game pad, and so I hit start, and so here we can see that in one of the save slots there's actually. Uh, there's actually a game saved. So I've, I've completed the game in this slot and I can start uh, right into any of those zones. And I can start in zone four. And oh, here it goes. What that means is that we've basically arrived at the end of our journey, because that is exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to have a little self-contained uh, retro gaming console that runs emulators and accepts cartridges and controllers. And so this is what we have here. Um, and this was really not that hard. As you could see, I, I only added a bunch of USB wires, and so this is like pretty much anyone who can operate a soldering iron could, in principle, do this. And of course, also you you, you want to uh, be a little handy with. Um, it does doesn't hurt if you're also good with with mechanical work like touching up the case and integrating the ports and these kind of things. But anyway, this is my story. If you have anything cool to report about, just let us know on the forum or on the website. We have a special section for user stories. So just let us know if you have something cool to show off and we'll be more than happy to feature it on the, on the website. Until then, thanks for watching.